So the next match <laughs> was Matt and Jeff Hardy teaming up on free television in a fucking cold six-man tag with their partner, Isaiah Cassidy, because Isaiah Cassidy had a tag team partner named Mark Quinn until apparently Mark Quinn is hurt so bad we're never going to see him again. I don't know what the fuck, where he's at. And they had a babyface match against the Buckaroos and Hangnail Page so they could play with their six-man tag team belts they made up for themselves. And uh, uh, one of the iconic named tag teams in modern wrestling history and they're reduced to having cold matches with other baby faces you know, for a meaningless uh, championship and doing the same shit that the buckaroos and hangnail always fucking do but now it's iconic names that potentially could have drawn some money upon their reunion had it been handled right, that are now just drifting down the river of mediocrity and despair. An irrelevancy. Did you hear the crowd reaction? Speaking of irrelevancy, did you hear the crowd reactions? The specifically the Bucks and Page, but even the Hardys. Bleh. Yeah. Well, why you know, even if they don't really like the Bucks and Page, they probably don't want to boo them because they're technically supposed to be heroes around there, but at the same time. Even though they probably used to like the Hardys, what is there to like right now with this presentation especially? So they don't, they don't really want to boo anybody or cheer anybody. They just want it to be over with. Which I skipped ahead until it was over with. Did I miss anything? No, it wasn't uh, that good. It was a typical, typical of the Bucks trying to do their things and Matt Hardy going slower than everyone else in there. And when Jeff Hardy does everything, he has the innate ability to make you think either... He's fucked up. <laughs> Not that he's fucked up, but that he fucked up a move. Injured. Or just something's Injured wrong. Injured or in pain or in, you know, in agony. You can never tell what's intentional, what isn't with him. But uh, no, beyond that, the, to me, the story was the crowd. The Bucks, like we've been saying, they don't get anywhere near the reactions from anyone that they used to. The bloom is off the rose. Well, the... The bloom certainly fucking drooped at the end of this thing because you could hear the silence when people were watching because they leave the buckaroos that hang nail in the ring and then suddenly up on the big screen pops up Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana is with him. And they are at hang... Uh, what we are led to believe and told is Paige's front door of his house. And they somehow get in or break in. I don't know. Did Prince Nana do the credit card thing? We've seen it on cop shows. Apparently, Paige is a big-time professional sports star, but he can't hire a locksmith, and he's just got little fucking shitty locks. But they break into Hangnail Paige's house, and they are doing a live remote. Again, the... <laughs> Yes, you can now stream video from your phone, right? Uh, you can live stream what you're doing on Facebook or on the internet or whatever. But they still haven't worked out how you can break in at random on a goddamn national television program from your phone. Have they? Well, you can stream it to the truck, and then the truck puts it on the big screen. And then they cooperate. That's right. And show... Members of their roster committing felonious burglary and breaking and entering on live television. Well, to be fair, if they got this feed, if they got the stream from Swerve or Nana, why would they expect that Swerve would ever do anything where he would go to someone's house and do anything illegal? Well, that's true, because there's not like there's a precedent. But as soon as Hangnail Page is the cowboy from rural Virginia, right? I don't know so, what part of Virginia he's from, but he's from Virginia, I've heard. Well, but they're in Philadelphia here. Now, a lot of the guys live in Florida, and Paige is announced from Virginia, but nobody's ever said he lives in Philadelphia. But when he's standing in the ring and sees on the screen these two guys breaking in his house, he jumps out of the ring and runs to the back. Where does he live? In the fucking parking lot? 
Is his house next door to the arena? How's he going to get there? He must be running to the train station. What do you think? I forgot about those high-speed rails they got up there these days. How far is rural Virginia from Philadelphia? 30, 40 years. <laughs> that's, um, not, that's not what I meant. I meant oh, in terms of if you were going to drive. Mileage wave, you were going to drive. He could be there in six, seven hours. So at what uh, point does Swerve get arrested on the show? In, well, char in character. And again, it's hit and miss the stuff with Swerve. The promos are typically all right, although he tries to be a cool heel, it seems like. The matches are good. The fans are into him. Again, a cool heel, it seems like. But then there's these like, I'm going to just go assault someone or go to their house and film it and nothing will happen. He gets arrested on AEW television the week after Tony Khan watches the episode of Memphis TV where Billy Joe Travis actually got arrested for non-payment of child support. But they talked the cops into waiting until after he went out and did his segment, and then they showed it on the air. Anyway, Nana was there, and he was jumping around in the kitchen eating berries, but Swerve was being serious. And he was like, yeah, Paige pay owes him. He cost him an opportunity, and... He wants Paige to pay him what he owes him. And then suddenly, Swerve hears something. And they're walking down the hall. And now, I don't know. I think uh, maybe Nana had the phone at first, but then Swerve got the phone, and you see the video shaking, and you hear the clump, clump as they're walking down the hallway. And then they walk into the kids' nursery. And now Nana is, like, getting the limber tail he's getting squeamish he's like oh man i don't like this idea man and swerve sets the camera phone down so he's i swear to god the shot is him kneeling over the crib but you can't see the inside the crib the baby that he heard and went down the hall and found the fucking crib is allegedly in the crib, but you never see the baby. You also never hear the baby. The ba and he cuts a promo over the baby. Should you pay your daddy's debt? Maybe one day, but not today. And after he cuts this long, threatening promo, he throws the kid a swerve t-shirt, and he throws it into the crib where it would have landed on the baby's fucking head. You've had children. I have not. You know more than I do. How big are these fucking cribs? About three by three? They're pretty small. You definitely don't want to throw anything over the baby's face. Could he have missed the baby if the baby was indeed in the crib with the t-shirt? Well, depending on the age of the baby, you wouldn't want to leave anything like that in the crib even if it misses the baby because they roll around, they move around, they could pull something over their face. Oh, there you go. Then he threw in a couple of plastic bags from Walmart into the crib. No, he throws the shirt into the crib. The baby never makes a sound. And again, we are alleged, uh, asked to believe that allegedly these two club-footed amateur cat burglars broke into this guy's house, were eating berries in the kitchen, sitting on the furniture, talking, and then walked down the hall, opening doors, cutting promo on the baby, bringing in merchandise for the baby, who else is in the fucking house? And then someone comes in the front door, right? No, they don't. Don't they hear? Isn't that why they leave? They hear someone else come in? I don't, I didn't, I was still shaking my head. I don't know. Well, if that's the case, then Hangnail's wife only went down the hill to the fucking convenience store and left the baby alone in the middle of the night for these two fucking surreptitious burglars to come in. What? Here's a bigger question for you. The pay-per-view. He beat Hangman Page, right? In Seattle? Yes. What's he mad at Hangman Page about? Because Page cost him an opportunity at something. I think they're using title opportunity like title shot again. Maybe was it the multi-man thing? Was it the opportunity? Was it the match that he lost to Danielson? Did he lose an opportunity there for you the go. TNT yeah, title? Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> the point is the baby's invisible. And the baby's a mute, and the the mother is obviously unfit and should be reported to Child Protective Services, and these two guys committed breaking and entering and heinous threatening of an infant, 
on live national cable television. And they went straight to the break so the announcers wouldn't have to react to it because how could they? Exactly. No chance for anyone to say anything about that. If it's an infant too, or even just a small child, you may have a baby monitor in there so that if they're not sleeping in your room, you can hear what's going on if they're struggling to breathe or if they're coughing or crying, whatever it may be. Or, well, if they're struggling to breathe, coughing and crying, just go in the room and turn AEW television off. Or don't throw your shirt on top of their face. <laughs> or, or mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be hangnail. I hate your dad. Here's some merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no, by the way, before anybody says, I'm not saying they should have had a baby. I'm not saying they should have had the baby, the little baby. I'm saying, what the fuck is this at all? Why would you do any of this? See, that's the thing. How does this get greenlit? Who pitches this like, okay, the next move in the Swerve Saga, he's going to break into Hangman Page's house during Dynamite. And cut a promo on his baby. Cut a promo on his baby with Prince Nana as the watch out. But they can't even add in the background or goo goo gaga. I'm sure a lot of people are saying goo goo gaga when they're watching this show. We can't pipe that in. Like I said earlier, AEW is getting worse and worse. These segments, in terms of now we have just crimes being sent in and played over the show. We have the lights going on and off, what was it, seven times on Collision <laughs> last week? Uh, seriously, wasn't it like seven times? Yes, yes. The lights went on and off? Well, and now, is it? do you take on and off as separate or on and off, that's one. Then it was, it was four or eight, one or the other. The show's getting worse and worse. These segment, every segment, whether it's a comedy segment with Adam Cole or a serious segment, like the attempted wasn't a kidnapping. I don't know what, just the promo on the baby in the, the house. The, the attempted forced merchandising yeah. of the of the baby. He was he was given merchandise that he would not want forcefully. Who breaks into a house and leaves something? I groaned as soon as they showed him walking into the door of that house, him and Nana. I'm like, oh no, they're not doing this. Because even though people talk about it today, like I didn't like the Steve Austin, Brian Pillman thing at the house. No. Let alone the gun. I just didn't like the whole idea of it. And I didn't like this one here. Well, and some people will go back, well, well that Dusty did it and the Horseman did it. And yes, they did videotape themselves uh, doing a felonious assault. But the way that it was explained in context was that they had hired a cameraman to shut up and shoot the message that they were going to send to all of Dusty Rhodes' friends, and they caught Dusty in the parking lot, and they broke his leg. And they knew that Dusty Rhodes was a man that wasn't going to call the police, that he was going to try to handle things on his own, and that was just fine with them if, they, if he wanted to come back. It was all tied together, and you could go with it. It wasn't... And they gave the film, or the tape to Jim Crockett Promotions, and it was aired with a caution that this was not something that, obviously, that we are condoning. This is what happened to Dusty Rhodes. And so now they're taking that, and we'll, we'll just put live felonies on the screen for everybody as they happen for our heel wrestlers, because they asked us to. And it, <clears throat> Baby sound effect, also. Baby sound effect. Anyway. Terrible. 